So, Thank so you. what next? What what else have you been up to? What else? So, good question. Uh, another common request has been from people who have built other astromechs uh, from Star Wars or who maybe have designed their own astromechs and want to be able to use a system like this for a droid that is an R2, uh, which is kind of an, an understandable question to ask and next step to want to take. And so with that in mind, so, uh, and here it is, the astromech vocalizer. And nice. right off the bat, you'll probably recognize the interface. It uh, shares a lot in common with the R2 vocalizer. So you've got your opening page here that lets you trigger different vocalizations for different emotional stimuli. And where it really starts to become a little bit different is when you get over here to the design panel. And what this does is it lets you sculpt the voice of your astromech to have a completely unique way of speaking and sounding that no one has ever heard before, that no astromech in film or in a build has ever been able to uh, convey. So at the top, we have the nature, and I'm gonna come back to that in just a moment. Below that, we have a color setting, which is very important because if you've designed your custom astromech, you want your interface to uh, have a, a sweet paint job that's gonna match the, the gorgeous design you've come up with. So, you know, nice. you get your appropriate color here. Attention uh, to detail as always, Michael. I love that. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. And then below here, you have your first set of controls that start to shape the Astromech's actual voice. And what these do is these let you prioritize or deprioritize different categories of word. So, for example, maybe you want to have an Astromech that has a a kind of a unique vocabulary and only speaks in, say, tones and whistles for this example. So what we can do is we can go through and prioritize tones, prioritize whistles, and then deprioritize everything else. And what this does, this doesn't affect the scripting interface, obviously, because you still, on this panel, you still have complete control over what words are selected. But now when you come back to the emotional stimuli panel and you trigger a happy vocalization, you hear it's only speaking in beeps and whistles. Gotcha. And now, this is a very extreme example, obviously, very limited vocabulary but you can mix and match these different categories of words to give your droid a completely unique voice. So that's the first step of customization you have, and I'm gonna neutralize all these for demonstration purposes. So just to double now, check with you here, Michael, all the ones that were read then, does it completely ignore those styles of speech? Yes, there are, there are rare cases where one still might come through if it reaches a logical dead end, but yep. for the most part, you will never hear those. Cool. Um, gotcha. And actually yep. possibly never will. It's uh, the logic gets very complicated on the fringes. So I, I can't, okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sign anything that says uh, you'll never get a moan in that case, but yes, uh, yeah. you will, you can pretty, pretty much. much expect to only get those categories of words. So that's your first level of customization and I've neutralized everything here. So now we're dealing with R2's vocabulary again. And that brings us to the second design panel. and. This is where things start to get really fancy. Wow. First, up at the top, you have a pitch selector. And anyone who has ever messed with pitch shifting a, a droid voice, like R2-D2, for example, has probably found pretty quickly that as soon as you start shifting the pitch of his sounds, they start to lose their character and they start to get a little bit weird. And the reason for that is that when we think of a pitch shifter, the kind of pitch shifter that most people have access to and the sound that people think of is a pitch shifter that that shifts two things at the same time, the pitch and the formant. And in music production uh, with vocals, those are two very different things. So you can think of the pitch as the note. Let's take a singer, for example. The note that a singer sings is the pitch. So the same, the same person can sing a high pitch or a low pitch, but there's another component to the singer's voice, which is the formant. And the formant is shaped by a person's actual vocal tract, their actual physiology. 
So the formant is the reason why you can tell that when the same person sings a high note or a low note, it still sounds like that same person um, because the formant has not changed because their body has not changed. So if you've ever tried to mess with an astromex pitch, what you probably ended up with is the same thing that you get if you shift the pitch and formant together of a person, which is the very distinctive chipmunk sound that a lot of people associate with really crude pitch shifting. And it sounds like a chipmunk because the pitch is going up, but the formant is also going up. It's simulating um, a, a creature in like a little tiny body with this little uh, fine vocal tract. So we don't actually want that when we are pitch shifting an astromex voice. What we want is to sound like, because all astromex have basically the same physiology, they're all roughly the same size and shape, we want them to sound like R2-D2 speaking in a lower pitch or another astromech speaking in a higher pitch, not like a little tiny, you know, two inch astromech making a little tiny chipmunk astromech voice. So what this pitch shifter does here is it lets you shift the pitch, but does only a very subtle shifting of the formant. And here's what that sounds like. So here, are, here's your standard R2 pitch level. And here's your downshifted version. And here's an upshifted version. So it sounds like an astromech with a lower or a higher voice. It doesn't sound like, for example, a monster, which is what you usually get when you drop the pitch, yeah. or a chipmunk that you usually get when you raise the pitch. Gotcha. So you can create a very natural sounding but unique astromech voice using these pitch options. And uh, here is, uh, I'll give a quick demo of what that might sound like. So here's our, our low shifted astromech. Nice. So it's still distinctly that astromech sound and character, but in a lower voice. And uh, here are a couple high ones for you. So wow. there you go. <laughs> wow. And I love this. To be honest with you, Michael, you know, I've followed you with the development of this app and this extra screen that I've never seen before. It's, I, I could say so simple. I'm sure it wasn't all the work you've done on it, but what a difference. It's, that's such a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, the, the idea is just to give people, um, anyone who's ever tried to make an astromech sound different has run up against these grammatical hurdles um, yeah. that the software also handles that uh, the the sequencing and the the ebb and flow of the pitch and timbre of the sounds has to sound a certain way or it doesn't sound like an astromech and the pitch as well you know as as soon as you start making manipulations that um kind of run afoul of the typical astromech sound it starts to just get weird so yeah. this is a way to give people access to control those things in a way that still is going to preserve the the astromech qualities. Wow. And so you have your pitch setting up here. Um, you have a couple other options. You can adjust the speed, and this is the speed at which the syllables are delivered. So here's there's going to be a very fast talking astromech. <laughs> So very frenetic. You could go the opposite direction, have a, a nice slow talking astromech. You know, a little slower guy. And then you have another option over here, which is the drawl. And the speed is the rate at which syllables are delivered. The drawl is how long your droid takes to enunciate those syllables. So here's a, a normal speed without any drawl. And here's a little bit of drawl getting dialed in. So just a oh, little nice. slower. I mean, yeah. yeah, maybe a maybe a little dumber. You know, it's uh, you know, could that's cool. could just be a little simpler, maybe. So um, speed and draw are your give you control over the delivery. So and Michael, then, could you just explain mm -hmm. the LED light there? So with the speed, we go green and red. So I presume the green is plus and the the red is less. Is it? Is that right? Exactly. If the yeah. if the and it's um. We should be clear, it's a, an incandescent lamp, not to be confused with an LED. My um, because of course, My this is a, 
<laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> retro panel. The technology simply of does course. not exist yet. <laughs> but yes, the LED or lamp, whatever you want to call it, is going to turn green if you are um, above yeah. neutral, neutral being the R2 rate of speaking, and okay. red if you're below. So that's, okay. a, that's a very good observation. And with the draw, that gets brighter as you increase it, is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah, the, um, yeah, the more extreme the draw is, the brighter it nice. is. Okay. Yeah, you know you're zeroed out in neutral mode when you see yep. nothing lit up and the middle pitch. Yeah, I love the feedback. That's, that's really nice. That's really good. The last set of tools you have here is a filter bank of effects. And this gives you another layer of um, colorization that can further treat your Astromex voice to make it even more unique. So, for example, um, you have I and I's down here. And for each of these effects, you have adjustments of the intensity and the style. So this one might sound something like this. Gotcha. So just a, a little bit of unique flavor for your astromech. Love it. And you've got a, a whole series of different effects that you can layer and um, uh, select individually, however you want to handle it. It's just a filter bank to give your astromech um, a completely unique voice that you can totally customize. So there you have it. Wow, that's that's amazing. So just the ionized slide of the style, how do we know that's in a neutral position? Obviously the power, I see the, the light goes out. If so, there's no such. There's technically no no such thing as um, an engaged but neutral effect in this filter bank. So okay. there's no such thing as neutral for style. Style just adjusts adjusts the parameters of ionize when it's activated. I see. So you okay. can you can ignore the style slider if the power gotcha. is completely off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's your filter bank, and uh, I think people are going to have a lot of fun playing with those. And uh, there's one more thing we need to cover here, which is the nature of your droid. And if you've seen the R2 interview, you know that the emotional states of R2 are controlled by this very advanced database that captures all of R2's um, emotional progression through the Nine Skywalker Saga films. It captures the way he tends to feel and the way that different stimuli cause his emotions to shift in response. And we see that in the emotional stimulus panel when we trigger one of these stimuli. And we see the LEDs slash incandescent lamps light up or turn off. These are yeah. telling us what the droid's current emotional state is, and they also color the way that each of these stimuli are vocalized. A happy vocalization is going to have a twinge of uh, twinge of anger, have a little bit of sassiness to it, for example, if um, there's a little bit of lingering anger at the time. And that data set for R2 is very complex and very powerful. And I think it's important that if someone is designing an astromech for themselves, they should not only have deep control over the voice, which we've demonstrated, but they should also be able to have deep control over the droid's personality. And that's where the nature comes in. So you can start by selecting a nature for your droid. And I've built in a bunch of different options. And so for example, uh, this is a pretty straightforward one. A droid with a cheerful nature is obviously going to tend more towards a happy state away from an angry or sad state. And gotcha. the, this nature setting colors the way that your droid's emotions will shift in response to your stimuli. This is your starting point. You also have um, another layer that gets added onto this, and that's where this option comes in. This is another option that's not present on the R2 vocalizer. This is the personality lock or personality growth. What personality growth does when this is enabled is it allows your astromech to have a living memory, basically, of all of the emotional experiences that you have put it through as the operator. Um, and when you have tracking like this, when you have this kind of memory of emotions, 
what that does is it gives your, it lets the software have an extra layer of thought and intelligence in the way that it processes these emotional inputs. In the same way that we have this database for R2 that consists of all of the emotions he's experienced on film, this personality growth lets your astromex emotions also become complex and also grow. And as you interact with your astromech, it allows your astromech to develop a complex set of emotions and emotional tendencies that can become as deep or if you spend enough time with it deeper than R2s. And wow. that personality growth, again, is layered on top of this nature starting point. So th this is where we begin. And then once you've set your nature and you spend time interacting with your astromech, its emotional depth, its personality growth is only going to increase over time. How many different uh, nature systems have you got there, Michael? Uh, that's a good question, and you would have to count because I don't know off the top of my okay. head. Okay, uh, <laughs> so I didn't mean to catch you out there. I thought you were going to go twenty-four. <laughs> yeah, twenty-four and a half. No, I have I have no idea. <laughs> um, there are a good number in there though. Right. There you have it. The uh, Astromech vocalizer. <laughs> wow. You can forget my evenings wasting hours on TikTok now. I'm just going to be wasting hours on that. I don't need TikTok anymore. I'm just going to be making R2 sounds all night and driving my wife crazy with that instead. <laughs> <laughs> I think if uh, if the whole world, if all TikTok users switched over to the Astromech vocalizer, I think the world would be a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we might have to wear earplugs fairly regularly, though, to be honest. We have to listen to that all the time. But, uh, well, no, that, if you spend a lot of time on TikTok, you need earplugs too. So. <laughs> Does that mean we've got a whole new app? And if so, when can we get it? Uh, it does. It's a whole new app. Um, I thought that the R2 vocalizer was special enough that it should kind of be its own standalone thing. And that this one also is, you know, um, I didn't want people to get confused about one versus the other. So for clarity's sake, one is R2, the other is uh, to design your own astromech. And uh, like the R2 app, the astromech vocalizer is now available for download. Oh, fantastic. Download it to, uh, Downloading now, Michael. <laughs> too intensely. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Michael, I, I know you're working on other developments as well with these, these amazing apps. Uh, you've got future plans, and I believe you're working with other people and you know pe sound systems are already out there. Um, but I just think it's amazing what you've done. You know, the, the app is so cool, and I just think people can learn a lot from this app with the sounds and, and what you've done? Um, I, I hope so. Uh, in, in talking with a lot of these builders, a common thread has been um, people voicing that they, they just hadn't thought that much about the audio side of droids or really the audio side of Star Wars in a lot of cases. And I think that Star Wars' sound design is so famous and so iconic and the droids equally are in particular especially famous and especially iconic and i hope that in using this app that people will start to develop an appreciation for um some of the the character and the emotion that goes into these effects in star wars and we'll get used to kind of thinking this way listening a little bit more critically with kind of um you know, uh, with an ear for emotion, how emotion is conveyed through sound in these films, through these droids, and we'll use that that sort of ability to um, basically voice through their built astromechs in person at conventions, um, at charity hospital visits, learn how to use the droid's voice in the same way that you guys have learned how to use the droids, um, you know, visual appearance, physical movements to convey these iconic um, uh, aesthetic Star Wars ideas. Um, and I think that that's going to be, it's going to just, it's a missing piece that is going to add so much power and so much magic to these, these in-person real-time droid encounters. And so I really hope people um, spend the time and energy thinking about that and developing that awareness. Nicely put. Yeah, really totally agree with you. And, you know, it's certainly something that I've been made more aware of. I think the audio is taken for granted at times in, in all walks of life, you know, and um, this click and repeat every time with the same sounds with R2, you know, they, they became very familiar. 
but it's so it's nice to have this new option now and you know it's just it's just so organic and yeah well well put i i'm wholeheartedly with you there and i'm sure all the other builders are as well you know they they respect all the work you've done you know the appreciation you've received already personally um and yeah long may it continue michael keep up keep up the good work sir <laughs> thanks Lee. I'll, I'll do my best i've got i've got to say we we finished off last time actually the last interview and we sort of sketched over the gonk the gonk droids and um you know the, the noises with the gong and it didn't really go anywhere but uh you being you i know you've gone off and done something <laughs> with the gonk droid is that right 